when I was a kid, okay, I was always like in love with life. I just thought it was so sad how animals had to die and people had to die and even like butterflies and cute bugs, you know, just a little roly poly kind. And I remember when I was about 12 years old, my mom ran off with her friends and our electricity went off. We lived with my grandfather. Electricity went off. There's no food in the house. What is this place? I used to have to go to school just to get the free lunch. That was my food for the day. Tiny little pizza. That big. And uh, I got, I even got pictures. I got down to like 110 pounds at age 15, 16. I was like a stick. And I just remember, you know, when the Tristy came back on and I would see those commercials, uh, you know, little little babies in Africa starving and dying. And I would go to my room and cry and cry and cry. And then I started listening to Prince, the pop star singer, because he had a song called Pop Life. Is the poverty bringing it down? And I remember just thinking, wow, he could relate. At the time, I didn't know he was a reptilian hybrid, but everything you see is an act. I'll, we'll get into that later on, but I just started listening to Prince. And his whole gimmick it was Prince in the Revolution. He was Prince in the Revolution, the revolution against God. God created everything and left it here to rot. That's what I believed. I was wrong, but I was 15 and in a lot of pain. And I'm seeing kids starving and we got food again, and I, just, I and I knew what it was like to be in the room and you're just dying. So I felt so bad. So I made up this little thing called the purple light. Prince was purple, meant royalty, light meaning wisdom. The wisdom was that nothing should suffer. I was taught when I was a little kid that one baby is priceless. You can't put a price on life. It's, it's priceless. It's it's, it's priceless. It's, a billion galaxies is not worth the life of one little baby. So um, the purple light was was the gimmick. It was the whole you know self enlightenment crap. Now on one hand, I was close to God more than I knew because God is love. On the other hand, I was far from God because God did not do anything evil to anybody. That was a lie of the devil. In fact, Adam and Eve were warned if they ate that tree of knowledge, they would die. They passed that genetic seed down to us, and because they were disobedient with God, it caused a rift in the relationship. Sin separates us from God the Father, the Creator. So anyways, I went on and got older, and in my 30s, it really bothered me seeing all this, you know, kids starving. 911 happened. I was about 31 years old. Didn't know it was an inside job. I, I just was upset with all the sick, evil people out there. So I, I wanted to fix it. So when I started writing, I was about 35. My brother told me, you have to start off with a story that's never been done before so you can get attention. So I wrote a story called Pale. It took me about, I think, two weeks to write it. It almost actually wrote itself. I was kind of like, it just kind of came out of me and I just kind of followed the pictures I was seeing. And uh, I was I was going to use this story never done before, publish it, and get the money, and then build a charity organization 
to go out there and feed starving kids. And about a year or two years later, uh, James Wan, writer of all those Saw movies, takes my story without permission, dips it into a ventriloquist plot, basically, keeps my story intact except adds a, a ventriloquist element to it, and he stamps it with his name that he wrote it, distills my story. The story that wasn't really mine was I wrote it, but it was going to be given to start more stories so I can start helping, you know, helping kids that were hungry. It was my dream. That's been my dream since I was a little kid. And uh, it's just so evil. And when time develops, as time goes on, you start realizing that you're not dealing with regular humans. You're dealing with a group of humans that are demonic in nature, and they're known as reptilian humanoid hybrids. These are humans that were uh, put in society by the alien greys. They went around for the last 90 years kidnapping women, impregnating them, taking the baby from them, and there's millions of accounts of this. So it's, it's, it's starting to become evident that that's what's going on. And they plan to try to sell this to the public in the near future as there are creators and that they're just they're just recycling the garbage they used 6,000 years ago when they were here before. Now last time they were here they became so devious so evil that God had to send a flood and drowned them all. But God did warn that in the end times they were going to resurface again. And here we are. And this time they look like you and me because they got a fit in society. So they've been a, the Greys came back. Alistair Crawley, a black priest in the satanic cult, did some black magic rituals involving snuffing out little children to the devil during orgasm opening up portals, allowing the gray aliens to come back through in the 1920s and 30s. They came through in massive amounts. Now they're in our dimension. And they went around kidnapping women, impregnating women, and creating these hybrid babies. This time they have more human DNA in them, and they're, and they're our size, they look like you and me. They have less Nephilim power, less telepathy ability, less physical strength, but they have more strength now because they're able to blend into society and infiltrate us all the way up to the White House. And they started off with the top of the government. The Roswell crash was to get into the government. They got in, killed the generals, cloned them, killed the president, cloned them, and they ever since they've been in charge of the top of the government since the 50s. And now they weeded on down into our level. You got doctors, lawyers, prosecutors, uh, most of uh, the sheriffs, the SWAT team, all the top people that run everything are reptilian hybrids. Well, the point I'm making is that I wanted to save the world. I wanted to at least help starving people because that's what I can relate to that. James Wan came up, snatched it away, and that's exactly what the reptilian hybrids do. It's because they want to cause pain. They want to cause atrocity. So it's just important to remember when the stuff gets nasty, when the gray aliens show up and they come bringing gifts, just remember their gifts are going to have a catch to them. They're going to have a, a, a Trojan horse, if you will. You know that story of the Trojan horse? There was a kingdom that was not getting conquered. So the people trying to conquer them pretend to leave and they left this giant statue of a horse. So the kingdom opened up their door, rolled the horse in, the statue, and were like very happy, very thankful. Well, as they slept, the horse opened up and all these troops came out of the horse and went around and killed everybody in the kingdom. Well, that's what the gray aliens are gonna do. They're gonna give us a Trojan horse. It's gonna be something that's awesome. Stop cancer, stop Morgellons, that they created, by the way. And it's going to be meant to over 
power the world. And the Pope's involved, and you got Obama's involved, and Hillary Clinton, and Trump's 50-50, and this is what they're going to bring to we the people. America's the last hope. If America goes down, if it ever goes down where there's no freedom at all, the rest of the world is screwed. It's going to take a miracle like God's intervention to stop it. And he's not going to intervene. He is going to drop the, the Holy Spirit on the entire globe soon. Everyone's going to get a chance to fill the Holy Spirit at the day of Pentecost. And then from that point on have, have the decision if they're going to stay with God or go back to their sinful nature. But they're bringing this UFO agenda total lies. I mean, James Wan's a hybrid. He stole my story. That's how they operate. They're vicious. They're evil. They're demonic. And God loves mankind and they're just going to cause judgment upon themselves. They're going to they're going to get what they deserve and they're the ones that are creating their own punishment. What they're doing isn't worth it, but they, you can't tell them because they don't want to listen. If the hybrids repent, they're going to avoid judgment. But that's where we're at. We're at us we're at we, people good good people out there trying to save the world, trying to save the trees, trying to and then they always wonder why they're not able to accomplish anything. They go, one, they go, most people want to save the trees. Most people want to save the animals. Most people want to make sure everyone has food. But why don't we have food? Why are there people starving? Why is there so much atrocity going on around the globe? It's because the people that are in charge of the world are causing the chaos. They're, they're, they're creating the wars. They're creating the starvation. They're releasing the plagues, and they're running the pharmaceutical companies that come in and treat you for the plagues. It's a money business. It's all about power and control. They want to monitor your life and be in control of everything you do. So, the bad news is we've been invaded by alien greys about 60 years ago, and they're about to come onto the scene and reveal that they're here. That's the bad news. Bad because they're demonic and they're coming to kill us. The good news is that Jesus Christ is 100% real, and there's hope. If you're a human, and you, you, you'll know if you're a hybrid or not, because if you don't think you're a hybrid, then you're not. If you're a hybrid, you, you know 100% you're a hybrid. They're, they're working in unison through telepathy, running this giant Broadway play to maneuver us into our cage like trapped animals. Because they believe they're the chosen star children and they're going to take over the earth and they're going to live for throughout eternity and God's just going to sit back and let it happen. They actually believe that. God is going to come home real soon. So you need to get your heart right with God because when he comes back this time, he's coming back to destroy. The first time he came as a lamb. The second time he's coming as a lion. He's coming back very upset. So you want to be on his good side when he returns. It's the point I'm making, so get your heart right with Jesus Christ. We have about 11 years at the most before this world goes bye-bye. I've prayed about this. The Holy Spirit's confirmed it. The Holy Spirit has shown me different events before they happened. He's put a, he put a special protection around me and saved me from being murdered by reptilian hybrids. My life is like... Like... Uh, it's just, it's just bizarre. I, I, I've had a really strange life. But the good news is that Jesus Christ is 100% real. And you, my friend, can be saved if you give your heart to God. Pray daily. Follow all Ten Commandments. And if you get married, you can have all the sex you want. Just make sure it's, it's a marriage of God. You know, become a Christian. Get your heart right with God and find another Christian. And ask God to send you someone that's human. Because reptilian hybrids are all over the place. And they've infiltrated the church. So you want to be very careful. And uh, you're going to live, if you live for the next 11 years, you're going to live to see the Antichrist come onto the scene. Earthquakes, famine, cannibalism, it's all coming down the pike. There's some really horrible stuff coming. And if you're not with God, 
you're going to be vulnerable to a lot of pain and a lot of misery. Matter of fact, God's going to open up plagues on the earth in the, in the near future, which is directed only toward the evil people. People that haven't surrendered over to God completely. There's going to be lots of... God's going to be plummeting the earth. Boom, 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 boom. And then, as soon as the One World Order is established and completely concrete, God comes flying down above Mount Olives with all the angels. And that's it for the devil. He gets his butt kicked. Then we go up to heaven for a thousand years for education to get ready for the new earth. God creates a new earth. God creates a new earth, a new heaven. And the Antichrist and the fallen angels and all the evil people are thrown into the lake of fire. Judgment's carried out. They go through the worst pain they've ever felt. And then, one by one, they die. The devil burning the longest, of course, because he's the most evil. And when his fire goes out, he's extinct. Never heard from again. And anyone that gives their heart to God goes on for all eternity. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So you and me have key to eternal life and it's ours if we decide to take the key and open the door by following God's commandments by honoring him by loving him and loving him is just appreciating what he's given you life and free will and it's so easy the gift is so easy and at times you'll go through trials and that's good because you're a Christian it's the devil trying to trick you and you stay solid with God and one day you'll live to see God and you're gonna feel his glory stimulation like you've never felt before and we go on forever to be with the Lord and when this is over God promises that this will never happen again there'll never be a flu there'll never be cancer there'll never be death there'll never be any pain it's gonna pass away for eternity so we go on eternity we go on through all eternity with the creator of everything and we live in his glory in the pure utopia and if they're reptilian hybrids repent God will contact them with a special plan if they don't then he won't now God bless you all out there get your heart right with Jesus Christ praise your Lord in heaven amen